What's up folks, it's Jang here from ultimatercom about to do an unboxing of the Traxxas Stampede two-wheel drive XL5 edition. This is the brushed edition, the basic one. This is the grown up or just, just a slightly polished version of what was my second ever hobby grade RC. So I'm looking forward to opening this up and let's uh, see what's inside. Stampede! Okay, before I get uh, to the good stuff, let me get, just uh, quickly go through some of the relatively lame stuff that's included with the package. Nice and neat, it's all uh, bundled up in this one little bag here. First of all, the charger is a wall charger, a very basic wall charger. You plug it in and you go. And it's for nickel metal hydride packs. Puts out a whopping 0.5 amps in total. Okay. What else? We have a speed gearing pinion right here. And this is used to get the advertised 30 miles per hour plus speed out of it, quote unquote stock. You have to install this and it's only for, uh, for driving for uh, on road basically to just get that 30 mile an hour top speed. You can't really leave this in there and just drive with it with the stock motor. It will burn it up. It does come with some tools, little basic tools, hand tools. Uh, most of these will not be used on this vehicle, this particular version of the vehicle, but hold on to them if you upgrade later. Some of the parts will use these and it does have a couple things that, that can be used for adjustments. It also has two bags that look like this and they have extra shock parts on them. And then the, the, these shocks were actually built using some of the parts that were on, uh, on this uh, sprue to begin with, but it has a bunch of preload spacers. So you got two times this many. There's another bag of them. And you have some extra pistons in, in different ratings and some spacers also. And then this little guy, this little bag has in it some body pins, which is important. They're not on there yet. And it has extra adapters to hook up different companies, different brands of of servos, steering servos, if you want to upgrade later on. You've got some body washers, you've got some some uh, double-sided tape here for mounting the ESC and some foam spacers also it looks like that are have uh, adhesive on one side and also the cap for the antenna tube because this does have a 27 megahertz radio system in it so you have an antenna tube that you will need to hold on to and thread the the actual antenna wire up through that. Uh, I've got a little sheet of decals here. There's a warranty card. There is a, it's an instruction set in here. There is a Traxxas catalog in here. Okay, that takes care of the lame stuff. Now, so that I can just focus on the truck by itself, let me get the controller out of the way also here. Radio controller, 27 megahertz. The same old basic bottom end controller that they've been using since when I got into the hobby and before. So well over a decade here. Uh, AM band uh, uses eight AA batteries. It has trims for steering and throttle uh, centering as reversing for those two. And that's about it. That's a very nice long antenna that uh, it's kind of out of date nowadays. We don't like to see that too much, but this is what you get with it for the basic set keeping the price down, which leaves us with the Stampede itself. Here we go. Two wheel drive, monster truck. And it, uh, basically the front end and the rear end are <laughs> shared with a lot of other vehicles for the most part. Uh, the, the Stampede uses the same front and rear as the Rustler. The steering is a little bit different, but most of it is, is the same. Uh, a lot of stuff is shared with the Slash platform also. A lot of stuff is shared with the Bandit also. Just different arms on each of those. And most of what you get from height for that real monster truck look comes from a combination of two things. One, big old tires. And two, the body is lifted way up. So let me go ahead and take the body off. Uh -huh. And there you can see the body posts are just super tall. They're just standing way up. 
So, though it looks like the body is all up here, the weight is actually here and lower. Now, there are a bunch of warnings here. I, I, I said I was trying to get through the lame stuff, but here's some more of it. Uh, nobody likes warnings, right? If you're new to the hobby, if you're new to electric vehicles, you should read these things. I mean, this one's just telling you to use uh, Traxxas connectors. Okay, that's that's no big deal. But then this one is kind of a, a quick, almost a quick start guide for the ESC, the speed controller. And this has some useful info on it, including how to swap back and forth between nickel metal hydride mode and lipo mode, because it has a lipo cutoff in there to keep you safe if you upgrade to more modern batteries and then i know there's another warning over here another tag and this one is talking about the motor and it's basically saying don't abuse it or it will blow up and it'll melt well, a lot of people blow up and melt their stock brushed motors and this is just telling you some basic things to do to try to avoid that if at all possible which leaves me with finally no more of the lame stuff sounds familiar just the cool stuff, the Stampede itself. All right, let's see. Look at some individual features. First of all, suspension being a monster truck, it's important to look at the high riding suspension that it has. And it has actual oil-filled shocks with, with coilover springs. And uh, you, these shocks are perfectly good, even though they're basic and they're plastic. They're actually very good. Only bad thing about them is that these caps Sometimes when they're under a lot of stress and you take you land a jump real hard, they'll actually pop off from the pressure in there and from a little bit of a uh, little bit of motion. So to stop that from happening and spilling all that good oil that's in there out, uh, just you can swap out these caps by themselves for some cheap aluminum caps, and that fixes everything. And then these become actually very good shocks. You can change the weight of oil. You can change the pistons. And you can change the springs out here also to make to do a lot of adjustment. The stock setup here feels pretty decent right now. Uh, might be a little bit, a little bit over uh, the, the springs. I'd, I'd say are a little bit too long. I wish they were just a little bit shorter so I could remove some preload and let it sit a little bit lower for a little bit better performance. If I'm if I'm not trying to do some real heavy duty off roading, but uh, short, changing out the springs again will will help to fix that. At the rear, the suspension is it's a similar setup. It has A-arms, front and rear, and uh, the coilover shocks. And here, this feels a little bit stiff. Most, mostly, I think mostly the springs are a little bit, I don't know. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's a little hard to tell. Uh, it's, it's in the ballpark, but I think it could use a little bit of work, but it's not too bad. And then the tires, while I'm holding one of these, big old tires, uh, these are on the, the Traxxas specific 2.8 inch size of wheel, which is larger than the old style. And these the tires themselves are just extra wide. They're the same wheels that you'll find on the Rustler Stadium truck, but the tires are made much uh, specifically or, or particularly wider, not so much taller. They're a little bit taller, but it's the width that really gives you that that meat to it. And these these are somewhat soft but somewhat hard too and i've had experience with these tires in the past and they're really not that great on a two-wheel drive vehicle they just tend to slip a little bit but we'll see how the performance actually goes with it take a look at some of the electronics setup that we've got going on here first of all it does have all waterproof everything as far as the electronic setup is concerned the the servo that is facing downward here is a waterproof uh, 2056 series servo, which is their higher torque servo, and it's been waterproofed on the case. It was originally specified for the much larger uh, Traxxas T-Max and uh, also uh, used on the e the E-Max, the electric version. So that thing should have plenty of torque to turn this thing. It's not a fast servo, but uh, definitely strong. And then uh, moving along over to here, you've got your waterproof ESC. It's the Traxxas XL5 unit, which is a brushed only ESC, but a pretty reliable one in general. Only thing that's bad about these sometimes is the the uh, button will get a little bit stuck on some of these. And then across from it, you have the 
waterproof receiver box. So your receiver is inside of there and it's completely sealed off from the elements. So you can safely drive this thing through puddles, even through mud if you want to, and it's not gonna short everything out. Uh, you will still need to do a lot of cleanup and you will still want to dry everything off very thoroughly because all the other metal parts and pieces of hardware and such can rust out and will rust out for sure. But uh, at least you can get get through it. And if you accidentally hit a puddle or something, you don't have to freak out. You know, you can keep driving. And that that's a good a good thing. You can also run in the rain. You know, if you got a little bit of drizzle going on or something. And uh, the the motor is they call it a 550 sized motor. It's a brushed motor and most of the extra length of it it's longer than the old ones most of the extra length is just from a fan that's uh, added in to help keep it cool still runs a little bit hot in general and you'll want to watch your temperatures on this but a pretty torquey motor it's plenty of power to to run this larger sized vehicle and it's geared appropriately hopefully uh, they, they used to be but uh, well, i'll check that again in, in the reviews but it they used to be geared just right for running these larger tires so it's not gonna not gonna over stress the motor and then the transmission that it's hooked up to has all metal gears inside of it the the differential has some plastic plastic parts to its housing but all the teeth of everything are are uh, metal so if you want to upgrade your motor system later on to a brushless system you can you can just drop that in take out your esc and your motor and drop in for instance the traxxas valenion uh, slash VXL combo will we'll drop right in and I've got the, the mounting holes for that and all. And you don't have to worry about upgrading your drivetrain immediately. Uh, there are bearings inside of there and there is an adjustable slipper clutch which you can you can access through here. You can use one of the tools that's included. This is just a little rubber diaphragm that you can pull out and uh, tighten and loosen the slipper clutch to help remove a little bit more strain from the from the drivetrain and also can be used to help uh, maintain a little bit more traction by taking some torque away from you it does have uh, plastic good old plastic slider shafts on it so that's if anything is a weak point in the drivetrain of this vehicle it would be those but they do tend to, to hold up pretty decently uh, as, as long as you don't get a tremendous amount of traction and have your slipper t uh, turned way down. Now, I mentioned that it has ball bearings in the transmission. However, it doesn't have ball bearings everywhere. If you look up there, look down deep, deep, deep for a little round thing, a little round button. Uh, around that is something that's bronze colored and that is an oil light bushing. Not a bearing, it's a bushing. So that's something that you will need to keep uh, lightly lubricated from time to time and it is something that can wear out over time so if you do upgrade later on to a brushless system you will probably want to remove some friction from your vehicle from your uh, from just remove some rolling resistance effectively by upgrading those two bearings they are larger size the 5 by 11 millimeter size so it's a good size and you won't need to upgrade any other parts to to be able to run you just need to swap those out and there's uh, two of them in each corner so eight in total that you'll need to swap out another thing about the stampede that makes it unique amongst the two-wheel drive traxxas offerings is the the high uh, center clearance provided by this style of chassis so it has a very narrow kind of channel channel or tub hybrid sort of chassis very very skinny there when you look at it from the top but from the side you know they've just lifted it up in the middle to uh, give you a little bit of extra clearance if you go over a rock and something comes here if you have enough uh, enough momentum you can sometimes just push right over it it's not tremendously useful in the sense of adding ground clearance because ultimately your ground clearance is here you know your your distance underneath your transmission and then your distance here underneath the front bulkhead but uh, this definitely helps out a little bit in really rough terrain uh, as long as you keep your as long as you keep some speed going this thing is not going to crawl uh, especially with two-wheel drive but um, it just gives you a little extra room and helps again with the look you know that real monster truck lifted look now 
one thing that I didn't mention electronics wise is that it does come with a battery. It comes with a seven cell nickel metal hydride battery pack. It's a 3000 milliamp hour uh, pack and it comes with it. It works with the wall charger that's included. Not a super, super powerful thing, but you know, f especially for, for folks who are getting their first RC, just like my first one was a, was a rustler and my second one was a stampede. Well, this way you actually get something, uh, get a battery pack with it. So you don't need an additional battery uh, purchase on the side to actually get running. So this is enough to get you up and going uh, at least for one charge. And then you got to wait quite a while for it to charge again, but it's, it, it can be better than nothing uh, for well, a lot better than nothing for folks who are relatively new and don't have a lot of equipment already. If you already have a lot of batteries on your own and you have your own nice digital charger or something like that, then uh, the nickel metal hydride that it includes really isn't that great. It's not going to give you any more, even though it's considered 8.4 volts nominal compared to a two cell modern lipo pack that is 7.4 volts nominal, they're going to give you comparable top speed and the lipo pack is going to give you a lot more punch, better acceleration. So that is the Stampede XL5, the two wheel drive version. And that's what you get with it. That's what it looks like in stock form coming up next. Well, not necessarily immediately after this video, but next in my life with this Stampede, I will need to start running it and uh, I, I will leave it in perfectly stock form to begin with and uh, give it a fair shot, see how it does on different types of terrain, different types of driving conditions and driving styles and uh, do a little bit of comparison to other things that I've that I've run in the past and I will start publishing some driving videos raw driving videos I already have uh, I think at least a few driving videos of the Stampede XL5 from when it was first introduced in 2006 but it's old video uh, performance is going to be similar but I'll give you guys some new fresh stuff and then that will all be used towards my full-on review of the Stampede XL5 two-wheel drive and we'll see where it goes from there. So thank you very much for watching. Hope that was uh, fun for you to see this uh, vehicle in box stock form just as it comes right out of that box with that nice new RC smell and <laughs> hope you'll uh, stay tuned and uh, be on the lookout for the next video that's coming up soon. I'll see you then.